This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hey there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter and welcome you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. There is no on this day because honestly, August 28th, there was not really anything good. But anyhow, this birthday boy is now 52 years old. He played for many teams. He played for the Sabres, the Islanders, the Habs, the Blues, the Stars, and the Avalanche. He is actually the younger brother of another NHL player, but he was a major flop by the name of Sylvain Turgeon. In fact, they're the only two brothers in NHL history to be selected in the one and two slots of the draft in separate years. Pierre Turgeon is what they call the offensive coordinator for the LA Kings of the NHL. There's an offensive coordinator in the NHL. I know there is in football, but hockey, really? Really? He's actually the most productive retired player not in the Hall of Fame. Why? I don't know. Anyway, Pierre Turgeon's uh, hockey career started when he was involved in the punch-up in Pierre Stani, the, the Pier 6 brawl that saw Canada face the Soviet Union at the World Junior Hockey Championships in Pierre Stani, Czechoslovakia. January 4, 1987. Canada was aiming for gold, whereas Soviets were playing for pride, or lack thereof. Basically, the Soviets kind of started the brawl knowing that they could go Canada into it, and then Canada would lose their shit and all that. Both teams were disqualified. In fact, he was the only player to be on the bench when the Canadians fought the Soviets. I thought everybody was on the ice. I guess not. However, the Buffalo Sabres saw some potential in him and picked him first overall in the 1987 NHL draft. The draft had some very good picks, too. Pierre's brother, Sylvan, was drafted second by the Hartford Whalers a couple years prior. But Brandon Shanahan went second overall from the London Knights. Um, major. Um, Joe Sackett went 15th overall from Swift Current. Weirdly, Quebec didn't draft him first. Well, Quebec had two first-round picks in 87. They drafted Brian Fogarty, who basically became... A mess after his career was over. Andrew Castles was drafted first round by the Montreal Canadiens. He turned out to be okay. Anyway, Turgeon made an impact for the Sabres. He did well, helping the Sabres reach the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time in a few years. His production would increase. He was a solid performer for the Buffalo Sabres. But due to Pat LaFontaine's contract negotiations going sour, there would be a trade. The Sabres would end up trading Turgeon, Ben Mahogue, Uwe Krupp, who I did a birthday boy on, and Dave McElwain to the New York Islanders for Pat LaFontaine, Randy Wood, Randy Hillier, and future considerations. Practically, the Sabres would do well with LaFontaine, but injuries and concussions would ruin his career, whereas Turgeon would keep going until 2007, so the Islanders probably won the trade. Fuck the Islanders. Anyhow, Turgeon helped the Islanders out in 93. He scored out of 32 points and helped the Islanders to the West Conference Finals. The Islanders shockingly got to the Final Four, knocking off the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Divisional Finals, a.k.a. the Conference Finals. Semifinals, if you will, on a goal by David Folek. Unfortunately, Turgeon missed many games in that career. I mean, in that series, in that season. Because in the first round, when the Islanders were putting the icing on the cake, did not off Washington. Dale Hunter waited a few seconds after the puck went in the net, and then went checking from behind on Turgeon. Turgeon had a separated shoulder. He would come back for the series against the Habs, so he just missed the one series against Pittsburgh. And strangely enough, the Islanders won without him. Unfortunately, though, that was not good for him. And the best news was that Dale Hunter was given a 21-game suspension, which was the longest until Martin McSorley came along. Turchon was given the Lady Bing in 93, ironically enough. And then the Islanders were trying to rebuild, so in the lockout season of 94-95, he decided GM Don Maloney wanted to trade Turgeon, and he did, to the Habs for Kirk Moeller, Matthew Schneider, and Craig Darby. 
So the Oilers kind of had it, something coming. But yeah, to trade for Kirk Muller. The Habs had a habit of trading their captains. All that. Turgeon would be given the captaincy in Montreal after the Habs traded their captain, their next captain, Mike Keane, to Colorado. Yes, that was the Patrick Watt trade. Fight me. Anyway, so during the 96 season, he almost got a 100 point season. 96 points. And then early in the 96 97 season, in October, he would be traded to St. Louis with Craig Conroy for Murray Barron, Shane Corson, and a fifth round pick. Kind of stupid, don't you think? How uh, Montreal would just basically dumped off their captains and like that. Torshawn did pretty well and would actually be a postseason contributor. His best postseason goal by far is in Game 7 of the first round of the 99 playoffs against the Coyotes in Phoenix. I believe that was the first... Oh, no, sorry. I was going to say the first series that Phoenix played at home in the playoffs. Nope. But anyway, Terrajon would tip home a Ricard person shot in overtime to win the game and send St. Louis to the next round against the Dallas Stars. Bad news, Dallas won. So anyway, Terrajon would sign with Dallas as a free agent in 2001, play a few years with them, and then would go to Colorado in 2005. Turgeon would have to change his number when he played for the Avalanche, as his 77 was retired for Ray Bork. Kind of suspicious, because Ray Bork only played like a year and a bit for the Avalanche. But anyway, Turgeon had to wear 87, but he scored his 500th goal against the San Jose Sharks. In fact, he's the highest scoring player in the NHL history who is still eligible for the Hall of Fame. With 1,327 points. That's pretty good. George was named the offensive coordinator July 2017. Was named. And then he would, and then they trade and then he left the organization due to family reasons. In fact, Turgeon and his wife have four children and live in Colorado. Unfortunately, one of their child, one of their children died in a car accident. Ironically enough, Pierre Turgeon actually had represented Canada in the 82 Little League World Series. Two of Pierre's kids have gone on to do well in hockey. Dominic was drafted by the Red Wings in the 2014 NHL Draft. And his daughter, Valerie, played for Harvard. The their women's hockey team. So he's been to five All-Star games, one lady being, as I said, 1,327 points in 1,294 games and with 515 goals in the playoffs, 97 points in 109 games. Not bad, don't you think? So I'm just going to take a look at the 82 World Series. So the 82 Little League World Series was actually documented in an ESPN 30 for 30 documentary in 2010 because Kirkland beating Taiwan, who basically won the Ty the country of Taiwan won five straight Little League World Series. Oh, that. Yeah, so Canada was one of four teams in the wor world to compete. Spain, well, Canada, Europe, Far East, and Latin America were represented. So Quebec, Madrid, Spain, Taiwan, and Venezuela. Canada ended up beating Spain before Taiwan beat them to get to the final. Canada lost third place to Michigan. So that wasn't good. Ironically, that Pierre Turgeon was not the only member of the 1982 Quebec team to play professionally for another team. Well, Wilson Alvarez played for Venezuela, and he was a decent left-hander who actually got a no-hitter in his second career start in 1980 with the Chai Sox. But yeah, Stefan Matteau played for the 1982 Little League World Series team in Quebec. So, wow, that's pretty amazing that how we have two NHLers who were decent in the 90s playing on a Little League World Series team. So, yeah, that just doesn't make sense. But it doesn't have to. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond, I do.